Now, lots of things have changed since I lasted my what's in the bag, and not only what is in the golf bag itself, but where I get to film it from. place to film a what's in the bag in Royal Bed Golf Course it's unreal I'm filming for three days and there's a lot of videos that are coming from out on the course which will give you a bit more of an insight into just how special this place is but anyway what you're here for is what's in the bag of the average golfer and we're going to start off at the very top end of the bag and this is one where already there's an either or option right what a backdrop for the first reveal it's a tailor-made original one mini driver why have I gone to it well for two reasons because shorter shaft greater control off the tee and a bigger head profile and I'm saying bigger than a, a, a three would just gives me that greater confidence as well in terms of sat behind the ball I'm finding lots of fairways with it I'm getting plenty of distance off it I'm still a massive fan of the G400 Max and that's the thing that I'm slightly concerned about I may switch between those two drivers but for the moment it's a tailor-made original one that's going to be in the bag right so there's one other reason i like the mini driver over and above the driver and that's because i can potentially play it off the deck now it's a tough shot it's not what i'd always choose to play but i'm finding that i can pick it up off the fairway and get some incredible distance off it i'll have a go here so it's very much a kind of a bit of a left to right sliding shot is the one i can it and not always so long par five aim down the left and see if it'll just cut back in a little bit. That's got to be right back in the game. It's, uh, it, it's on the fringe of this par five. And again, you see that, I'd, well, I hope you can pick up the ball flight. There's no way I could play driver from that lie, get that kind of ball flight. So it's again, it's another massive tick in the box for me for the original one mini driver. Right, okay, so before I go into too much detail of what's in my bag, let me ask you this question. If you could have access to any products, any manufacturer, any brand, what would be in your what's in the bag? Right, the next two clubs are the three wood and hybrid. Now, the three wood is the Ping G410 hybrid. Now, I'll talk to this, uh, I'm going to talk about this one very, very briefly because the Ping G410 range as a whole, I wasn't particularly fond of. And the big issue I had was the sound. And I do have a big issue with the G410 three wood, but it's going to end up in the bag. So why? How can I overcome the sound issues? Well, it's based on performance. Um, I love this club, I love the way it sits behind the ball, it's a very shallow club face. Um, again, lots of good performance off all of that club face, so in other words, plenty of forgiveness, at least that's what I think is happening. And uh, plenty of confidence off the tee, I found lots of fairies with it, it's certainly a go-to club. And I also find it very easy to pick up off the fairways as well. So for that one, I'm going to overlook the sound issues that I have with it because I can override all of that because of its performance. And the next one is the hybrid. M6 hybrid again in all the tests that I did last year it came out on top for, for every category for me personally again and don't forget that's mega important me personally I love the way this club looks I love how it performs I love the ball flight really is an overall good performer and the only sort of again either or situation is for me personally playing on links courses which I like to play a lot of I might swap this one out as I like to play longer irons and a long iron might make an appearance as well anyway enough of those two let's go to the other end of the bag now and start off to reveal there's a big change coming here and it's the putter right so the first a big change I think really is um, it's the putter I say big change they're all big changes at the minute 
I've been messing around with putters for the best part of two years and I think one of the problems is I've been testing so many that I swap and change and I've never really got comfortable with anything for a personal game of golf and I've done a custom fit in recent videos with PXG and I got something sorted for me personally all the things that I like so mallet style plumber's neck uh, counterbalance in the butt end or uh, right length of shaft them kind of things so I'm really happy with the setup I'm going to say in a few terms through this video that this is not about thinking that all of a sudden changing clubs is going to make you into a fantastic golfer. This putter isn't going to start holding putts for me, it's not going to improve my putting stroke. But I do think what you can do at least is give yourself a bit of a chance, a fighting chance out there on the course. And confidence is a major thing, being able to align the ball is another major thing, I'm talking about putting obviously here. Um, liking the feel off the face, understanding the feel off the face, some judgment in terms of distance control. So they're all the things that I like about this putter. It wouldn't be for everybody, but for me, it's something that, at least from the custom fit element, ticks all the boxes. It's about me then going out on the golf course, putting a strike on the ball and being able to hold some putts. But I love this putter. I love the way it looks as well. But can I hold putts on the golf course? That's a whole different thing. A little slippery one at Royal Bled down the slope. Love this bold white alignment stripe. It's so strong that again, I know exactly where I'm aiming with it. And if it stays out, hanging out to the right hand side, which it did then, that's my fault. That's where I aimed. Let's see if we can get this one going a little bit straight. Can we all one on the camera? Not a chance in hell, that stayed out to the left hand side. But straight away, like I said, I love the feel of it. I love it from long distance, I love it from short distance. It gives me a chance. Everything else is down to my poor stroke. Yeah, big change there in the putter, but there's another change coming as well, and it's in the wedge game. I'm gonna start the wedges off at 50, 60 degrees. This is part of the gapping thing that I've done in the last few weeks. And this wedge came about purely by chance. In a video I was looking to film, which was the easiest wedges to hit out there, and it turned out it was a Cleveland CBX wedge. Again, at least that's what I found. I used it out there on the course. I managed to pick up a second-hand club, a 50, 60 degree wedge. I've used it on a number of occasions in the last few weeks. And I find that from a number of different positions, including out of bunkers as well, it's a real, real good performer, an all-round good, versatile club. So that's where it's gonna start with the wedges. But now there's another big reveal coming because it's into the irons and this is a major change. Right, okay, so this is the, probably the biggest reveal, probably the one that you're most interested in, and probably the one that I might get the most stick for, but I'll tell you, I've gone for PXG 0211 irons, and I'm gonna give an explanation as to why I've made that choice, and there's, there's a number of reasons, to be quite honest with you. Um, let's start off with the looks, aesthetically. I really like the way these clubs look. That's a personal thing, very much a personal thing, I'm not gonna go into any detail, but I love the way they look. Not only aesthetically, but how they sit behind the ball, how the top line looks at a dress, and that's right throughout the set. So that's a big factor for me. Second big factor, and it's huge, is how they feel. This is a cast club. I've just done a video of these irons versus uh, other cast clubs. And I can tell you now what they've achieved with these in terms of feel and sound is incredible. I don't know how they've done it, I don't really care how they've done it, but the fact is, trust me, try these irons out and they have got an unreal feel. It's a big deal for me because I've always been a massive fan of forged clubs, but I think they have achieved something really incredible in a cast club. And then finally, it is performance. And I say finally because for me, whatever irons you choose, whatever you play, nothing is going to make you a better player. You might achieve some greater forgiveness with different clubs and there may be a confidence issue that may make you play better, but ultimately we all know it is always the Indian and not the arrow. So I am no mug. I am not expecting to all of a sudden become a fantastic iron player with 0211 irons. But the performance out of these is very, very good indeed. 
They do exactly what I would expect from them. In all the testing we've done, they achieve all the numbers I would want to get from uh, distance, uh, from spin, from launch angle, ball flight. They do all the things that I personally like. And again, not necessarily the same for everybody, but it would be for me. Now then, um, the next thing is the way they've put the set together. And it's a combination set. And what they've managed to do is from the uh, wedges through to seven iron, it is uh, a very small, almost players like profile and then in the six iron through to four iron it's much more of the uh, well they XF style irons that you see in the 0311 so a bit bulkier a bit thicker top line a bit of meat behind the ball and again that's just given me that extra bit of confidence that I want from these irons so they're the main reasons uh, I'm going to talk about the cost at the very end of all this but they're the main reasons that I have chosen to play the 0211 irons and I've got to say the biggest thing that they do for getting all of that they put a massive smile on my face when I go and play golf I like grabbing them out I like cleaning them I like the look of them I like every iron that I play and they give me a massive amount of enjoyment from a game that I really like playing Well, we managed to pick that ball flight up on the camera because ultimately that's just a nine iron in hand into the screen and what a green it is. What a superb golf course this is. I hope you're enjoying uh, watching a Royal Bled as much as I am filming it. It's unreal. But again, 148 yards, nine iron, bang on a button. The ball comes out the air. It stops a bit of backspin there. These tick all the boxes for me. Once again, an incredible backdrop here at Royal Bled. This is a par three. I'm playing off uh, pretty much a back tees here just so I can uh, show, try and show you something at least. I talked about the different profile in the irons. This I've got the four iron in my hand, and what they've done at PXG, like I said, there's a bit more meat, a bit more mass in these longer irons, and a bit more confidence for me. It's a thicker sole down there as well, um, not to a degree where it's off-putting and it becomes clumbersome. So they've done it a very neat way. Again, this uh, sort of cambered profile off the top line sits really nice behind the ball and gives that uh, at least thought that it looks more of a compact iron but you feel like you've got that confidence when you see that bit of bulk behind it as well. Four iron 200 yards into this par three it's right on my limits it takes my Sunday best to get there with this but uh, we'll give it a go. That's actually long, I can't believe I've just hit that so well. I thought I'd move back to this back tee box thinking it was right on my limit. It seems it isn't. I need to sort these yardages out on this uh, four iron because that's probably carried around the 210 mark, but I hope you picked it up in terms of ball flight. It's stunning in terms of the fact that the loft on this in relation to the way the ball launches is absolutely incredible. And uh, I enjoyed every bit of that, even though it was long. Right, no, that wasn't the wrong club. Uh, no, four irons aren't going 220 all of a sudden. It was bang on. It's pitched at the back end. It's just rolled off. But one other interesting thing, just about the course, this one, how difficult it can be at Royal Bled if you miss the greens on the wrong side. And this is the wrong side of that flag. Slope is way off from left to right. I've not got that 56 CBX wedge, by the way, with me today, but uh, I'm going to try this 50 and uh, find a way of popping this up in the air and letting it fall down the slope. Get down that slope. That's incredible. I could try that 20 times and that ball is racing from left to right. And now it's gonna need a good putt from the gunboat. That last one released a little bit, but the last thing in the bag, and uh, it can only be seen as a channel sponsor, I suppose, it's the Seed Golf Ball SD02. But let's be fair, I chose this ball long before they were a sponsor of the channel and I love the way it performs. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this one. The video's gone on long enough. But I've tried to give you an in-depth explanation as to why I've made the decisions that I have. And the SD02, it's an all-round decent performer for someone of my level at an unbelievable price. So, time for an overall summary, I think. Right, okay, that is the end of my What's in the Bag 2019, and I think it'll stay that way for quite some time. Uh, I think it's worth pointing out. I've been lucky enough to get my hands on all this equipment, um, a very fortunate position that I'm in, so I'm not suggesting that everybody goes out and uh, there's a magic wand that fixes your golf game. That's not what happened. But 
Um, those clubs, right from putter through to driver, I absolutely adore every one of them. They give me a great pleasure in playing them, a lot of fun, a lot of enjoyment. They're not going to make me a better player. I think ultimately, let's understand that my handicap's not going to be come tumbling. As I said, I ain't going to start holding more putts. But what they do, do they give me a better chance of playing that a little bit better? But they give me one thing, and the only bit that matters, and I think that's the bit that's important to every single golfer that's out there. They bring me a huge amount of enjoyment from the game of golf that I play. Uh, anyway, that is it. End of. Comments down below. Tell me what you think. Um, thank you to Royal Bled Golf Club for letting me film this out here, which is an unbelievable facility, an unbelievable experience. Plenty more videos that I've filmed that you'll see on the channel over the next few days. Make sure you keep an eye out for those. As I said, comments down below. And I think I'm going to play a few more holes and then, as ever, finish off with a pint.